Here are 10 pictures I photographed and developed at age 17 for a photography class I took in 2004. Here's a picture of my mother and I in a car abandoned a few miles from where we lived. Here's what someone had written on that car. All Mexicans will eventually die in Alaskan concentration camps. Just stick around, Gaucho. You couldn't create this, so your primitive jealousy had to destroy it. Here are pages from eight journals I filled from cover to cover between 2000 and 2004, between ages 14 and 18. Here are 13.27 pounds or 6.01 kilos of writing that I dragged along with me for 12 years across seven state lines. Here's a close-up of my impedimenta. Here's a postage stamp I collected. Here's an angry email from someone I provoked. Here are my voting stubs from November 2004, when George W. Bush was re-elected for a second term. Here's a name that appeared in those journals over and over and over and over for four years. This is a picture of Laura. Here's the clique of younger friends Laura gathered around herself. In my journals, I called them THEM with a capital T. Here they are dressed like kings and queens and that sort of thing. This is the back of Laura's head in mid-2000. She is directing a production of Much Ado About Nothing for my homeschool program. She's 21 years old. This is from one of the performances. I'm playing Don Pedro, the Spanish Prince of Aragon. I'm 14 years old. Here's a note Laura wrote in my yearbook. It says, To Don Pedro, It's been an interesting and wonderful year. I know you will always follow your heart with beautiful results. I look forward to a long and beautiful friendship. Love, Laura. Here's another picture I took. I kept it in a wooden box together with a sonnet Laura wrote me in reply to one I had written her. Here is a picture with a bunch of people from my school. The red dots represent people who knew. The blue dots represent people who didn't. Note that we are all dressed like kings and queens and that sort of thing. Here are some drawings from my journals. This is a drawing of 9-11. This is a drawing of a minotaur. This is a drawing of two mermaids fucking. Here's a picture of me. Here's a picture of me. Here is another picture of me. This is a picture of me. This is also a picture of me. Here I am on March 25th, 2017. I've blindfolded myself. I'm walking off a ledge. Here I am, falling. My lord, they're here. Who? Oh. Them, my lord. What them? Them, thee them. The day has come, my lord. They have come seeking your mercy, your help, your forgiveness, the grace that only you can grant them. Oh, that them. Sir, yes, all the people who... Just you wait, some day they'll come looking for me and asking for... Asking for my help and forgiveness, desperately needing the thing I have. Yes, yes, I remember. So, they have arrived at last. At last I will be avenged. Their fates will be in my hands. 
that will have the power to take or to give and to withhold. They're all here, my lord. They seek refuge from the rum beasts and the pig -motters. They deserve to be pig -motter fodder. The boozy baron? She is here. Lady Squirm? Here also, my lord. The one with the thing? I, sir. The Duchess of High Horse? Yes. The Duke of Daft? There are all of them here, my lord. Remarkable. My lord, Lawrence the Lively is among them. What? The Lawrence the Lively? Yes, the one, your first love. Do not call him that. But he was, my lord. You said so yourself. Do not repeat to me what I know well to have said. Oh, did I love Lawrence the Lively. So handsome in those days, and nine years my senior. Almost like a father. Oh, the perversity. His little charms. He should have known better than to welcome the naive and foolish advances of a boy. A boy! My lord, I could not overcome my own passions. What did I know of love? Nothing. I knew nothing. You were but a boy, my lord. A boy who should have had more dignity than to so recklessly and ardently pursue the man who rejected him. It was too little too late, and by then you had done too much too heedlessly. Too much, too much. If I may be so bold, my lord, you are too extra. You speak truth, man. Will you require a private audience with Lawrence the Lively, my lord? Small decorative objects. That's what he told me. That he wanted no more gifts, no small decorative objects. And to think I had given him so much more. You gave him the gift of your everything, my lord. Why? Why do men so willingly hand away their most secret and powerful selves to other men? It is a question even the sages cannot answer, my lord. Aye. Perhaps fear of responsibility. In times of desperation, it is easier to surrender one's own will to whatever mad soul promises, even if falsely, to elevate that voice beyond its cage of flesh. Tell me, Lawrence the Lively, does he look well? Very ill, my lord. Ha! Though I will remind my lord that he is nine years thy senior. Traitors, fools, children playing the games of children all struck by a disease of conscience to which only you possess the cure. Send them to the gallows where they might hang like common thieves. The gallows are always an option, sir. No vision had these people. No interest in advancing the kingdoms of their simple minds. Indeed, my lord, perhaps you could draw out their sorrow by sending them to work in the mines. Ah, the mines, where their nails might blacken and fall out, their fingers and toes ground to a blue, bloody stumps. They are waiting in the courtyard, sir, moaning, clamoring for your attention and judgment. Let us not forget the dungeons, that they might be tortured, pulled to pieces by my hounds, that I might wring out of them even a small bit of my lost pleasure, that they might feel the same deep hurt that I have felt. My lord, such musings fall pleasantly upon the ear. Nay, nay, I shall feed them, gorge them like pigs for slaughter in my banquet halls, Overwhelm their starved senses with food and wines. Give them hot baths, exotic essences, and feathery pillows to rest upon. And so I will shame them. Shame them, patronize them, punish them with a wicked generosity. My lord is of many minds, and they are each of them brilliant. Ah, but perhaps I shall simply send them back into the wilds. Leave them to the worthless mercy of the winter and the insatiable hunger of the rum beasts. Abandon them with nothing but their own poor wits. Whatever my lord pleases, you have awaited with much eagerness for this moment. I have indeed. Let us not bore our guests any longer, footman. Send them in. We shall see how the moment inspires us. <laughs>